First of all, um, Karen Ullenbeck, congratulations again. Thank you so much, and thanks to everybody who made it possible. Yeah, in your acceptance speech, you gave a nice overview of your career, and you thanked many people, but you didn't tell whether you had any plans, because the Abel Prize isn't only an enormous honor, but it's also a prize with a uh, uh, six million uh, kroners. Right, which is a lot. It's a it's a lot of money. Th yes. that's right. Well, <coughs> in fact, before the prize was announced, the day after um, I was told about it, someone asked me what I wanted to do, what I was going to do with the money, and I sort of said, <coughs> I, "I don't know. I haven't thought about it or anything." But it didn't take me long to decide what uh, <coughs> I'll do with uh, half of it anyway. So half of it I've <coughs> I'm uh, uh, giving to uh, two organizations for the benefit of underrepresented minority mathematicians in the, uh, <coughs> uh, the Institute for Advanced Study. I'm giving uh, <coughs> uh, one million kroner and uh, two million to the EDGE Foundation. Many people know what the Institute for Advanced Study is, but the EDGE Foundation has been educating uh, young, uh, uh, women uh, uh, going into graduate school. Uh, half, uh, uh, it's run from Bryn Mawr and Spelman College, and there are both uh, uh, underrepresented minority and, and uh, women, uh, ordinary women going into it, and it has gra uh, many, many, many of their graduates now have PhD in mathematics, and uh, they, it, they've been uh, uh, a very good uh, support for um, <coughs> minority, uh, the minority uh, group of mathematicians. <laughs> <laughs> And I think that really tells us something, because during your acceptance speech, you said that when you were younger, you thought, I don't want to change the world. I just want to do mathematics. But now it seems that you do want to change the world a bit. <coughs> well, you know, I'm doing this on behalf of everybody who stood outside and looked in the world of mathematics, wanting to be there, but thinking there was no way you would never make it. And I have to say that I afraid there's an awful lot of people who've been in that position. And this is sort of in memory of all, all the people standing from the outside looking in. Yeah. So when you were young, you grew up post-World War II in uh, what you described as rather optimistic times. Was it self-evident that you could go to university at all? Yes, my parents both went, were first generation in their families to go to university, but my parents both went to university, and it was expected that all of us would go to college, and we all did go to college. But um, <coughs> they certainly had more ambitions for my brother than they did for me. <laughs> but I, but I have, I mean, part of that story is, is I got to play with all his toys. <laughs> the, the, the little Lincoln logs and the building yeah. building materials yeah. and uh, yeah, and none of them won the Abel Prize, did they? <laughs> so, <laughs> and you also, I think, was you were rather late uh, when you were gripped by mathematics. It wasn't that you were six year old and already dreaming about doing these abstract things. Oh no, n no, not at all. I mean, um, uh, uh, most actually most. St uh, young children don't know what mathematics is. Uh, you know what arithmetic is, and maybe you know what plane geometry is, but, uh, and you may learn some rote things about calculus, but you don't have any comprehension of what, what the, the organization or the thought behind these things are. I was actually enamored of um, <coughs> Um, uh, astronomy. Uh, I always like to talk about the books of Fr Fred Hoyle. My father took them out of the library, and we both read them. The books on um, <coughs> astrophysics, and uh, uh, so I, I wanted to do uh, astronomy or physics, but not astronomy looking at the stars. Astronomy modeling the universe. Yes. Uh, yeah, because I also understood you never also really liked lab work and all these practical things that you had to do in physics. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, me thinking back in all honesty, the problem with lab work was always lab partners. <laughs> <laughs> 
somehow I never really had a good lab partner. <laughs> Yeah, it's rather interesting. You also describe, in, uh, I think, in an essay that you picked mathematics because you could work alone. Yes, that's correct. But then, in the end, if you look at your career, actually, you've done some very successful collaborations where you found someone who is from a slightly different field and do something new. Yeah, yes. Are mathematicians better partners? Well, uh, I, I or I picked them wisely, or something like that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure about about that. Uh, when I started out, I, I was very much someone that worked alone, and. Uh, <coughs> um, and uh, I also uh, taught myself a certain a fair amount of mathematics by myself rather than in courses or lectures. Um, but uh, slowly throughout the years, uh, <coughs> I, I became, uh, I, I've become to rely on uh, doing mathematics with other people. I mean, uh, the, the, <coughs> the problem with doing mathematics is, is that not only do you have to think about the mathematics, you actually have to write it up and uh, you have to actually, after you've gotten a great insight, then what do you do? Well, you know, I have a tendency to wander off, but if I have somebody that, I, that, I, that, that, that I've worked with and we've worked together on it, then I actually stick to it. Yeah, because you've also been a pioneer in many fields, and this probably is from the same tendency, right? Uh, you right. It's definitely true that if, if I have any, um, I I'm definitely did not pursue uh, further a lot of the ideas that I had in mathematics. Um, I wandered off and looked for something else to do. And uh, I, I think, I don't particularly recommend that to a young mathematician. Okay, that's taken down. Um, another thing what was mentioned is that uh, part of the being an ABA laureate is that you are a role model. And when you were asked for role models when you were younger, you answered that it was Julia Child. Um, for those of you, well, that's mathematicians. Um, she was a cook and TV presenter. And uh, how did you look to her as a role model? Well, I think a lot, a lot of people did. Um, <coughs> certainly, people would watch her television sh show, and she was, you know, six foot two and uh, this big, uh, enthusiastic, articulate uh, um <coughs> a woman. Uh, and uh, uh, so she had quite a fan club at the time. I mean, people my actually a lot of people my age remember watching Julia Child as well. So it isn't, it isn't, it isn't at all peculiar. It seems peculiar now, but it wasn't peculiar. But it also showed the image of being able to have a solid career, even if it was in a completely different field. Did that help? Well. Uh, she was just somebody who was successful despite not being all the things you were supposed to be. Maybe put it that way. <laughs> you also had later um, many colleagues in mathematics, um, and you described at some point that you were uh, looking around like, where are the other women behind us? That's right. Yeah. Well, that, that the, the idea was that a lot of people really thought was is that once the legal barriers were down and uh, the programs were open to everybody, that uh, I, 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 I'm afraid I don't remember where I heard this phrase first, but women and minorities would march in through the open doors. And at some point, we noticed that simply wasn't happening. <clears throat> and now people are very, uh, generally it's well known that this phenomena is not magical that is if if <coughs> if, if uh, you don't ne you can't people don't necessarily get ahead because there are no laws preventing them from getting ahead uh, but um <coughs> uh, and also when i was uh, secure in my own career then um and and uh, i mean it was Partly, my, my, my friend and collaborator, Julianne Turn, uh, she said, I, I, you know, uh, there were, I'm the last woman hired in my department, and I've been there almost 20 years, right? And uh, <coughs> so uh, and, and it was something that we noticed in the beginning of the 90s. And um, <coughs> so uh, then, uh, th by then, I had, uh, you know, sort of money, power, prestige, everything I really needed. It, um, and and uh, the Institute for Advanced Study offered us uh, secretarial help, uh, uh, space, uh, uh, 
the, uh, the name. The, and uh, so you, it was something you, you just don't turn down. I mean, even if you know nothing about what you're doing. <laughs> So that's when you started the co-hosting the mentoring program right, and yes. doing that. That's right. And you um, you specifically mentioned now that it's not just for women, also for minorities. That well, the program is still for women, but uh, my uh, at, at this point, um, <coughs> I, w I would have to say that I fear that minority, uh, the underrepresented minority mathematicians are more like women were in the 70s and 80s, where there were very few and very far behind, and we were really on the outside. And uh, I, I think that uh, the, women, the numbers of women have increased in the United States to the point where in me most, many, many situations, there are a comfortable number of women. But this is certainly not true for uh, the African-American community. I think it's really great that you're thinking of the broader sense. You immediately said it during the announcement of the Abel Prize. Um, something else I was wondering about, um, how do you work in mathematics? So um, you described it a bit already in many ways, but does this differ from how other mathematicians work, do you think, how you did it? Well, I don't know if I've ever had a discussion. Yeah, I, I am different, though, because the, the one, I know a lot of people who sit down and uh, <coughs> do calculations and uh, keep no take notes and keep notes, uh, keep a notebook of all their ideas and so forth. Well, my habit is, is to sit down and start from the beginning and write down everything I know about the problem. And then, you know, however many hours or days or months when I get bored and I'm not getting anywhere, I, I stop and I usually lose all the papers I worked on. And then I'll come back to it whenever the, the, I somehow suddenly say, oh yeah, I'm really going to give that problem another try. And I start from the beginning again, trying to see if I can't see it from a different point of view. How many things did this get lost in time, do you think, of these ideas? Oh, I don't know. I, I, oh, I, I don't really like to think about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. And there have been enough that succeeded, so that's definitely... Well, in fact, in fact <coughs> one, does, one does feel uh, sort of badly, badly about it because uh, lots of times you'll see somebody, other people come up with an idea that you actually tried very hard for a long time and you don't think works. And then you see other people trying the same idea again and not wor having it work. And you feel that, well, maybe I should have told somebody that, I, that it doesn't, this does not work. <laughs> and how would you feel if anyone else did make it work? Would you be happy or? I would go. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I, I was trying to think something like that happened to me recently, and I was thinking, oh my God, I could have done that. Why didn't I do that? <laughs> Probably because you're already working on something <laughs> else again. This Thursday, there's a lot of Abel events going on, and on Thursday, you're going to be playing mathematical games with school kids. Do you, do you like that, playing games with, with young, younger students? Well, I, uh, actually, I don't do it much, so... Will it be a good experience for me? And will you beat them? Uh, I don't. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I will try not to. <laughs> if, no, in fact, I, I, I'm not much of a game player, and I remember this from a child because I was a very ambitious child, and I, I have the kind of mind that really grabs onto a problem and, and, and does it. And so I, ver I was very good at games. And <coughs> people did not like it when I won all the time. So I, I find games, you know, you feel bad if you lose and other people hate you if you win. So I, 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 I tend to back off from doing games. I'm, I'm, I'm like solitaire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or maybe you now also have these games where you compete together against the game. That would be something to try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a final question. You said in the past that you felt rather uncomfortable with the prestige and the prizes you got. How are you processing winning the Abel Prize? I'm just walking through it, doing what people tell me to do. <laughs> the next step. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and it's a whole lot of different jobs, like what are you going to do with the money? Um, how are you going to get to Europe? Um, 
you know, uh, I don't know, uh, what are you going to wear, you know, all these things. It just, you have to just tackle each problem as it comes. Oh, and the one thing I have learned, I have to say, that I really am much, much better at at this age and in this experience than I ever have been before, and that is, is I've asked for a lot of help. So uh, uh, I, I've gotten much better at it, and it makes life so much easier. And, you know, if you're, if you're lost, don't keep looking for where it is. Ask somebody. So will this be also another piece of advice? So don't jump from problem to problem and also ask for help when you can. <laughs> uh, ask your help as often as you can, not when. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. And also, um, I think you said yesterday that people are also encouraged to also uh, put more money into the funds that you're supporting. Yes, so right. In I fact think while we're all here, I think it's right. good that's to right. repeat the, uh, the that. In fact, the Institute for Advanced Study has already added to the amount of money that I gave them. Or I don't think they've gotten it yet, so it's promised them. So, well, thank you very much, and once again, a warm applause for Karen Ullenbeck, please.